In life, we all have moments when we make drastic decisions. Any decision taken outside of God is a decision leading to disaster and destruction. Right decisions will guide and direct us to the right places. I want you to ponder on this, how do you make decisions? What is the basis of your decision-making process? All of us make decisions every day. At times they may be insignificant, at times they have little or no consequences, and at times they have great consequences. The decisions we make today will not only affect us but also others. Our lives change the moment we make a new and good decision. A good decision will pave the way for better days ahead, while a bad decision can ruin a person's destiny. A decision can either change, beautify, or shape our lives. A decision can either take us to the background or to the front line. In life, we are shaped by our decisions. Also, our decisions can either deform or transform our lives. A firm and aligned decision will usher us beautifully into the next phases of our lives. When we make decisions that are in line with God's values and goals, we will please our Maker. When we make the right decision, it will automatically open the doors of possibilities for us and windows of favor, direction, and distinction in life. Are you at the point of making a drastic decision in your life? Then please remember this, your decision can either draw you closer to God or disconnect you from God. Your decision can either promote you or demote you. Moreover, your decision to serve God will make you dine with kings and your voice will be heard in your generation. To enjoy a glorious and meaningful life, please make wise and discerning decisions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Decisions become successful when you go the extra mile to please God. Thus, when your decision is in accordance with God's will, it will outweigh your will to please the world. When you prioritize pleasing God over seeking approval from the world, it will bring a sense of peace and clarity to your decision-making process. When you make the right decision, it will lead you to the right path and places. When you make a faith-based decision, you can't be swayed by societal pressures or external influences. Making decisions based on your faith can provide a strong foundation that will guide you toward a fulfilling and purposeful life. Sometimes, drastic change requires drastic measures, and these measures will lead to destiny-fulfilling results that will completely change your life for good. Are you pondering making an important decision in life? Please don't make it without prayerfully seeking the leading, guidance, and the help of the Holy Spirit. Are you presently at the junction of making a drastic decision about following the Lord? Then my story will encourage you to go ahead because it pays to make such a decision. Are you in the midst of tragedy and think it is all over? Then my story will encourage you not to give up because it is not yet over. God can bless you with beauty for ashes as he did for me. In the midst of tragedy, God blessed me because of my decision to forego all and follow him. My story is a beautiful example of finding beauty and blessings even in the midst of tragedy. Despite the hardships and losses I faced, I chose to forsake my ways and follow God. Thus, this assured me to an open door for breakthrough. I demonstrated selflessness, loyalty, and love to God and my mother-in-law. God recognized and honored me because of my decision and faithfulness. God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Thus, my decision to follow and serve the God of Israel is the best decision that has shaped, structured and transformed my life. Whom you follow will determine what follows you. How you follow God will determine the dimensions of your blessings. Your acts of kindness and obedience to God can bring about unexpected blessings and rewards. May the Lord grace you to make the right decision in this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right decisions will make you stand rightly in life. In this new year, may the Lord give you the grace to make the right decisions that will uplift you, in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord grace you to make decisions that will be in alignment with His plans for your life and destiny, in the name of Jesus. Amen. My name is Compassion. I am a product of God's grace. God graciously graced and changed my life despite my background, to prove His mercy and faithfulness to mankind. 
This is my story. My beloved wife, do you think we will survive this famine that is currently going on in the land? We have been surviving, and we will continue to survive by the grace of God. If you are asking if we will survive the famine, do you want us to die because of the famine? My queen, far from that. I want us to migrate to the neighboring country of Moab where we can stay together with our two sons until the famine is over, because the storm will one day be over. My king, are you saying we should migrate from Bethlehem in Judah, together with our two sons, and live for a while in the country of Moab? Yes, my love. My dear, have you prayed for God's leading and direction? Who leads us will determine the safety of our journey. Who leads us will determine who will preserve us in a foreign land. Who leads us will determine who will protect us in Moab. Who leads us will determine who will go with us. If God leads us, he will provide for us and bring us back to our land. Please remember this. In the book of Psalms, 127 verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. My dear, don't you see it's high time for us to intensify our prayers for God to preserve and provide for us. It's good to pray and seek God's face and will before making important decisions and moves in life. You see, almost all of our people have migrated to Moab for refuge. The fact that others are migrating doesn't mean we should migrate. The fact that others are seeking refuge in Moab doesn't mean we should also seek refuge there. My husband, please let's prayerfully surrender to the Lord and make him our refuge. In the book of Psalm 46, verse 1, the Bible says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God knows we are in trouble because of famine, and he will come through for us. Let's be patient. My queen, please listen to me and follow my instructions. If you don't want to go with us, then our two sons and I will go and abandon you, here and you will live like a widow, because your husband won't be with you. My king, please, with all due respect, mind the words you are using in this challenging moment. Do you want to die before your time? Why are you saying that if I refuse to follow you, then it means I will be living as a widow? Please withdraw that statement. My queen, I'm just kidding. That's an expensive joke. As a child of God, you should avoid using negative words, because words are powerful. Always remember that, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. My queen, can't I play with words again? Please don't play carelessly with words. Always practice choosing your words wisely, like a wise man because the words you speak will always manifest in your life. What you don't want to see in your life, don't pronounce it with your mouth. My queen, how dare you say I am not wise with my words? What foolishness is there in my words? By saying that if I don't follow you guys, I will live alone as a widow, those words are not wise at all. Please, let's conclude on this migration issue. The fact that others are migrating to Moab doesn't mean we should, unless God leads us. My brother, my heart is broken. Malin, if your heart is broken, then come, let me mend it as a carpenter, because carpenters are menders of broken objects. Killian, it's not a joking matter. What is the cause of your heartbreak? Did you foolishly surrender your heart to a careless person, and since she is in charge, did she decide to handle your heart roughly, toying with it? and trampling on it? Killian, why are you talking like a woman? You are talking like a man suffering from verbal diarrhea. Can't you ask what happened to my heart? I don't want to ask because if your heart is truly broken, you ought to be in the hospital because your heart is a vital organ. It is a muscle that pumps blood to all parts of your body. If your heart is truly broken, you won't be strong and standing on your feet like this. You can't understand. Please explain for me to understand. Now I know you are suffering from a broken heart, which means your situation is an emergency. Are you experiencing any chest discomfort or pain? It's important for me to inform mom about your broken heart condition. From there, I will call for an ambulance. Killian, 
Please hold your peace and let me explain. Did you know that Malice, my fiancé, traveled to Moab without telling me? My brother, do you know that some women can really pretend to love? These are the words she used to flatter me with. Malon, I can't live without you. Knowing you is the best thing that has happened to me. But what suddenly happened, and she left without saying a word to the one she claimed to be in love with. She said she can't live without me, but now she is living without me. My brother, keep your love drama aside for now. Let's concentrate on the issue of famine currently hitting us. Malin, if the door of a relationship closes, God will eventually open another door. God allows everything to happen for a reason. Brother, please control your emotions and don't let them control you just because Malice, your fiancé, chose to travel without your knowledge. By the way, her mother was not supportive of the relationship, so she might have influenced her decision to leave without a second thought. Additionally, you know she is a submissive daughter who deeply loves her mom and always follows her instructions. Malin, my brother, no matter how broken you say your heart is, surrender your emotional pain to the Lord because he is the ultimate source of comfort and healing for emotional wounds and traumas. Don't let it shatter you. It will negatively impact your mental health. Please protect your heart and always remember that every difficult situation has a positive aspect. A broken heart heals when you allow the healing to go as deep as the wound went. The healing you need from any broken relationships is your responsibility, and the duration of your healing depends on your ability to push past brokenness and stay positive, thus hoping for the best to come. Don't keep mourning because she left without a word. Rather, move on with the winner's mentality with these words in mind. After the storm, there will be calmness. Now, what's next? Forget about your hurts and hold Jesus tighter. Forget about the memories of malice and meditate on God's words, and it will distract you from pondering on lost memories. My son, I want us to travel to Moab to escape from the famine in our country. The situation is getting worse day and night. Despite the situation, the prices of basic commodities keep on increasing without an increase in salary or other things put in place. Daddy, have you shared your plans with mommy? Yes. But she wants us to pray before we step out to Moab so as to know God's will for the journey. Daddy, I think mommy is right. It's good to always put God first. Those who put God first in life will never come last in life. Daddy, do you know that Malice, my fiancé, and her family traveled to Moab a few days ago? Malice left without saying goodbye. Malin, don't bother. By the grace of God, when we travel to Moab, you will meet her. Daddy, I don't think so because Moab is a big country and she does not have a phone. My son, don't bother. God will give you another partner. Daddy, you ought to say she will come back rather than saying that God will give me another partner. My son, don't put your life on hold. After all, she has moved on. Relax and reflect on the next step. Marcel, I hope you are doing well. Yes, I am doing well. There is an opportunity to travel to Canada. If you are interested, let me know. The travel opportunity is very urgent. Pursue it and you will thank me later. But I don't have a passport. Don't worry, the employer will take care of that after you have paid for the visa. In addition to the visa fees, you have to give $1,500 to the company to process your work visa and pay for your insurance in Canada. It's an opportunity not to miss. Only a true friend of yours can tell you about such an opportunity. I have a brother who is doing extremely well after following the same program. I will get back to you. Malin, I have a letter for you from Malice, your fiancé. She gave me the letter before traveling to Moab with her family. I'm very busy now, and I don't know when I will be available to give you the letter. Can I come to your house and collect the letter tomorrow? No, I will only be available next week. I really want to read my letter. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to stop my own activities because of a meaningless letter whose content may cause you pain and sorrow? Please can you open the letter and read its content for me? Sure, I can help with that. Just let me know when you're ready. Killian, Daddy wants us to travel to Moab. I am sure you initiated the travel idea because of your eagerness to go to Moab with the intention of seeing Malice, your fiancé. 
How could you be so self-centered and wicked as to selfishly initiate the idea of traveling to another country with your family, thus risking our lives, all because you want to go for your own personal gain? You want to endanger our lives, to go to a foreign land because of a woman who doesn't care about you. Oh, my brother, it's far from that. Daddy disclosed the travel plans to me because Mama wants him to pray as the head of the family before leading us to an unknown country. Okay, I see. My brother, please don't mind me. May the will of God prevail in the name of Jesus, Amen. Mommy, one of my classmates introduced me to a travel opportunity to Canada. My son, how can you travel without a passport? Mommy, it's not a cause for concern, because from the narrative of my friend, if I pay the visa fee, the company will provide a passport for me. Can you listen to yourself? How on earth can a company or an employer provide you with a passport from another country? Mommy, my friend said it is possible. Besides, I have to deposit $1,500 to the company. What is the essence of the $1,500? The company will use the money to process my work permit and insurance. My son, count me out of it. Please tell your friend to inform the company to cover the costs of the work permit and insurance and deduct the money monthly from your salary. My son, I won't be laboring in casting nets in the air in the name of traveling because I don't have the money to sponsor your visa and other expenses. Mummy, we shouldn't miss this opportunity. Let's sell this house and follow the visa process and other things. I can't make important decisions in life without prayerfully seeking the face of God. By the way, I won't deceive you by saying that I will sell this house and embark on such a risky adventure. Many families have been stranded after selling their lands and houses to travel abroad, and many have been duped in the process. Going abroad is good, but it is not wise to sell your only investment because you want to travel. If it's unsuccessful, your life will be miserable, and you will fall from grace to grass and from riches to rags. Please beware and be wise. Making any decision without wisdom is dangerous. Mommy, you don't love me. You can't go the extra mile for me. My son, please go the extra mile to seek God's opinion regarding the decision you want to make. Any decision you make is crucial, and it can either make or break you, destroy you, or build you. This is the content of the letter from Malice, your fiancé. Malin, my love. I know you will be surprised of my action for traveling without telling you. The traveling was very urgent and I didn't have time to come to your house to inform you. My love, I apologize for my action. I was under to arrest from my mother. Please if we never meet again, I wish you all the best. Oh no, she promised to love till death do us part, yet she is the first person to say goodbye to me. Oh, I can't take it. And I can't believe her actions. Oh Malice my fiancé come back to me. Malin, you must accept what has happened and move on. She has abandoned you forever unless otherwise. Don't dash your hopes in life because of a woman. Hope in the Lord. Man will fail you, but God won't. So concentrate on God in moments like this. Don't allow the wind of disappointment or heartbreak to crush you emotionally, or else you will be seriously injured. Are you aware that I am deeply hurt? Yes, I am aware. Do you want me to be hurt as well because your heart is broken? A wounded, faithful soldier in the midst of battles will never give up. My queen, we will travel to Moab later in the day. My king, please, I haven't received any confirmation from God concerning our trip. Let's be patient until God speaks to us. My queen, I know you are a submissive wife. But don't disagree with me on this matter, else you will be on your own. My mind is made up. My king, please, with due respect, we are a family, so I think the right word to use is our minds are made up. That is a trap I can't fall into. If I use our minds are made up, whereas you are still waiting for God's confirmation, it means I will be stuck in the storm, because I am waiting for God's confirmation. My king, it is better to wait on God for a little while for his confirmation concerning our migration to Moab, than to hastily move without God and his will for our lives. My wife, follow me as I follow Christ. My dear, I wish that statement were true. You want to follow your own instincts, 
saying, Follow me as I follow Christ. Christ is not at the center of this journey. My love, if you want Christ to be the forerunner of this journey, then let's tarry for some days as a family and hear what he has in store for us. My word is final. If you don't want to live like a woman without a husband, then follow me. This is a wonderful travel opportunity that I shouldn't miss. Since I'm going to my aunt's house, I believe she will support me financially for my travel. My nephew, you are welcome. It has been a long time. What do I owe for this surprise visit? I hope all is well. Auntie, all is not well. I want to travel abroad, but my hands are tied as if I have been bound with a rope. My son, since you don't have money, don't embark on a journey that will stress you out. Auntie, no stress, no rest. It's better for me to stress out today and make it in life than for me to relax today and be stuck forever. Auntie, I need your help. My son, what are the travel conditions? I will pay money for the visa fee and the employer will provide me with a passport. Is the employer a resident in our country? No, auntie. Okay, continue. The person who introduced me to this travel opportunity also said I will deposit $1,500 to the employer, and he will use the money to process my work permit and insurance. My son, tell the employer to process your work permit and insurance, and deduct it monthly from your salary. Auntie. Why are you using the same language as my mother? What an elder can see standing up, a child can't see the same thing even if he climbs the tallest tree. Don't make an important decision in life without thinking. My husband, I told you to prayerfully seek God's will before we traveled, but you hastily took your family out without seeking God's direction. Now we are refugees, and our children are subjected to hard labor. My wife, no condition is permanent. It's not the time for a blame game. We are already in this situation. What comes next? Let's pray for our protection and the protection of our children. Let us also pray for God to preserve, protect, and provide for us in a foreign land. Lord, grace us not to compromise our salvation despite the harsh working conditions here. Some even contradict the word of God, which we strongly believe in. Women are treated well but refugee men are treated harshly. Your decision landed us into this. If you continue blaming me, the situation won't change. The dynamics of the blame game have never provided a solution to any problem. Instead, they pour gasoline on a situation that is already on fire. I am not happy because Malon and Killian are exposed to hard labor, and they are not even living with us. I wish I could change my decision. Let's keep praying for their safety. Sir... There is something special about you. What could be special about a refugee and during harsh labor? Don't call me sir, call me Malin. A person referred to as sir is a free man who deserves respect. How can you call a refugee sir who is undergoing harsh labor? By the way, what makes you think I am special? I have been observing you. You are not as lousy as the other men from your community. Besides, I always see you praying when others are playing. Who are you praying to? I am praying to the God of Heaven. He knows my situation, and I want him to speak over my situation. Please, I want to know more about your God. Does he speak in here? Yes, he does. His word says, Call on me in the day of trouble. I will rescue you, and you shall honor and glorify me. Can I also call upon him? Will he answer me? Yes, he will. He is a merciful God. If you forsake your ways and follow him, he will save you. He never came for the righteous but for sinners. He never died for righteous people but for sinners. I admire your God. He died to set you free. Point of correction, he died to set us free. If you acknowledge him, he will set you free. If you believe in him, he will set you free. We have been standing for a while. I have to go now. Before you go, please let me tell you my name. You can always send somebody to call for me if you desire to speak with me. My name is Compassion. My name is Malin. Mr. Malin, nice to meet you. Thank you for your time. I truly appreciate it. Gracious Father, 
I have come to inquire from you concerning this traveling opportunity my son is talking about. My Savior, is it your will for him to travel? My Lord, please, reveal yourself and prove to me if it is your will. Father, if it is not your will, prove it to me. I don't want to hastily make any decisions without you. Don't sell your house for an adventure that is questionable. If you want to remain homeless, then sell it. Don't get carried away by what your son's classmate is saying. You are a wise woman because you have prayerfully sought my guidance. I won't say much, but don't go on the journey, or else you will cry and lament later. Grizzly, do you know a man named Mr. Malin from Bethlehem? Are you referring to the refugee from Bethlehem? Please don't call him a refugee. He is different from other refugees. He is not the same as the other refugees. A refugee is a refugee. Never call him a refugee. Please go and call him for me. Okay. My son, God is against the traveling opportunity. From the look of things, your classmate wants to manipulate you and drain you financially. Mommy, it's not fair. This is the only opportunity I have. It can never be the only opportunity, because God is against the opportunity. Any decision out of God's will is tantamount to destruction. Seek God's face before making important decisions in life, and he will lead, guide, and unveil the plan and agenda of the enemy to you. I really want to know about your God. My God is omnipotent and omnipresent. He is a merciful God. Make up your mind today, and he will be your God too. Are you ready to make this drastic decision that will change your life? Yes, I am. Please repeat this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I renounce and repent of my sins. Please come and be my personal Lord and Savior now and forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, help me to always make decisions that will please you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, I renounce and repent of my sins. Please come and be my personal Lord and Savior now and forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, help me to always make decisions that will please you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now that you are a child of God, you must avoid certain practices you did before. May the Holy Spirit always lead, guide, and direct you to know what to do and what not to do, per time, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will always pray together to build your spiritual capacity. That's thoughtful of you. I am grateful. My love, prayer is the only key that will open doors of freedom for our children from the refugee camp. Our children were taken to the refugee camp by Moabite authorities, thinking they may have negative plans against their nation because they are young. Let us pray for their liberation in the name of Jesus. Remember when Peter was locked up in prison, the church prayed and he was set free. Let's pray believing that the Lord will suspend protocols and intervene on behalf of our son's freedom and liberation in the name of Jesus. Amen. We serve a faithful God who holds the key for their freedom. Hallelujah. That's a wonderful suggestion, my lovely wife. Lord visit the refugee camp and set our children free in the name of Jesus. Amen. My brother, do you know I have a new convert? Are you kidding me? We are confined in this camp. How did you manage to go out and preach the gospel? A Moabite lady approached me and said, I am different from other men from Bethlehem. I asked why she said that. She explained that she had seen me praying on multiple occasions. She asked who I usually pray to, and I replied that I usually pray to my Savior, Father, and God, who listens in response to the pleas of his children. That's how our conversation began and I inquired if she was interested in giving her life to Jesus. She responded with a yes. I then guided her in the repentance prayer. Awesome. She noticed you from afar. It means that a believer should be the light wherever they go and whatever they do, and the believer is the Bible for the unbeliever. May the Lord set us free from this refugee camp in the name of Jesus. Amen. May we be the next set of refugees that will be set free in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am not interested in the traveling opportunity because my mother is against it. What made her turn it down? 
After praying and fasting for some days, she said I should forget about the opportunity because it's not meant for me. God has saved her. What has God saved her from? I can't explain further because the rest is history. Oh, I just missed that customer. Their God is their severe, otherwise they would have been ensnared in my destructive net. Many people nowadays are eager to travel, but she declined without questioning me or seeming desperate. I will block my friend's number. God must have revealed my manipulative and deceitful schemes to my friend's mother. Breaking news. A man named Hala Woom has recently scammed many people who were hoping to travel abroad for a better life. Many of his victims left their home country and were abandoned in another country, with Hala Woom claiming that he was still processing their documents for the next phase of their journey. Some spent months in transit, only to end up frustrated and homeless. Some of our citizens are stranded, homeless, and in need of assistance. Parents, guardians, and individuals, please be cautious about the decisions you make. Halloween even promised jobs to people who couldn't read or write. Many were so desperate that they believed miracles would happen once they arrived in Canada, thinking they would suddenly learn how to read and write. Most people fell victim to this scam due to their desperation to travel. Hala Woom was arrested a few hours ago and will face the law for his dubious behavior. Lord, I thank you for giving me a wise, discerning, and praying mother. Father, receive all the glory. Mom, I thank you for your prayers. King of glory, receive all the adoration for gracing and helping us not to make foolish decisions that would have frustrated us in the end. Husband of the widows, receive all the glory. Father of the fatherless, Receive all the honor, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Yesterday, my brother and I were liberated from, the refugee camp. So very early tomorrow morning we will go to where, our parents are. Thank you for introducing me to the prayer answering God. Your God has answered you. Please, I wish you all the best, and always remember me in your prayers. I believe God is working something behind the scenes for our good. I will not only pray for you. But you will one day become my prayer partner. My son, we are delighted to have you back, and alive. We prayed for your survival day and night. The God that answers prayers has been gracious and merciful to us. Lord, we are grateful. Daddy, while in the refugee camp, I met a Moabite lady who is working in the king's palace, and I preached the gospel to her. She willingly accepted it enthusiastically. She is willing to grow spiritually daily. Daddy, I love her. She is willing to serve and journey with God. Okay, invite her to our house. Daddy, I'm glad to be home again. Lord, receive all the glory. How many souls did you win in the refugee camp? Daddy, none. In fact, I did not even have the boldness to preach the gospel because of the circumstances surrounding my life. I only prayed when I was with my brother, because iron sharpens iron. I was even depressed because of the heavy load of stagnation in the refugee camp. I even regretted why I was born because life was unfair to me and I had no reason to smile. But now, I have a reason to laugh. My son, never allow your happiness to be based on external circumstances. Otherwise, you will always be desperate, miserable, and downcast. When life gives you a thousand reasons to weep, it's high time to stand up by faith and smile over the situation, knowing that it will one day come to pass. Always learn to give thanks in every situation. You can never go back to reverse history. Otherwise, Eve would have reversed her communication and temptation in the garden, which plunged mankind into sin. Nobody can reverse history by regretting. Otherwise, those who murdered Jesus wouldn't have done so because they thought by killing Jesus. The gospel would come to an end. But his death opened and paved the way for the gospel. They made decisions thinking their decisions were the best, but it wasn't because they regretted it later. At one moment in our lives, we all make decisions that cause us to regret. I also regretted when I migrated with my family, but I later discovered that regret is not a cure for any problem. When I read the word of God which says, forget about the former things, do not dwell in the past. The grip of regret falls away, and I am hopeful and determined. Thus, I have decided to trust God rather than crying, wailing, or regretting. Daddy, thank you for your words of encouragement. Lord, 
forgive me for allowing my circumstances to rob me of my confidence in you. Lord, have mercy on me for having confidence in my situation and not in my Savior. Gracious Father, please forgive me for looking at my environment without looking to the everlasting Father who watches over me and has finally set me free. Lord, forgive me for making any decisions without you. Master Jesus, be gracious to my family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Compassion, I am inviting you to our house. I want you to meet my family, and from there, we will know the next step to take. Sir, do you want to take a step back to your country, Bethlehem? Not really. Don't be anxious. I won't let the cat out of the bag, because it is not yet time. Killian, while in the refugee camp, I evangelized to a Moabite lady and she accepted Jesus and is willing to journey with God. You told me about her while we were still in the refugee camp. Glory to God. While in the camp, I allowed the deceitfulness of wealth and the desire for other things to come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. That is why I came back without any fruit. Lord, have mercy on me for allowing my circumstances to control, depress, and weigh me down. Killian, I want to get married to compassion. I love her. But just be careful, or else you will break your heart like malice. Two characters can never be the same. There's something special about compassion, and I believe she is the destined wife for me. He who finds a wife finds a good thing, and I believe as a family, we will all celebrate her presence in our family. Mommy, I have seen my missing rib. And she will be coming to the house tomorrow. Oh my god, where did you see Malice? Mommy, Malice is something of the past. Compassion is the love of my life. Mommy, I assure you, you will love her. Just from her name, I believe she will be a good daughter-in-law, to us. Mommy, do names really matter? Well, that is my own way of judging things, through discernment. My daughter, you are welcome. Thank you, Daddy. Congratulations my daughter, for saying yes to Jesus. Welcome to this special family. You are now a part of us. Daddy, how can I be part of another family since I am a Moabite? And the people of Bethlehem see Moabites as unbelievers. Before you gave your life to Jesus, you were a Moabite, but now you are part of a new family and you carry the DNA of Christ. With God, all things are possible. The first possible act from the Lord is the gift of salvation, which you have accepted. The Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The old you was a Moabite. By accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are now part of a new family, which is the family of God. The family of God is a very big family that transcends races, colors, nationalities, and continents. The entrance key into this family is the gift of salvation. Jesus paid our debts with his precious blood. He did not only pay the price for us but for all those who will accept him as their personal Lord and Savior. No doubt, the blood of all the animals they killed to offer sacrifices couldn't save my family, community, and me. Yet, Jesus paid my debt free of charge, with his blood, by dying for me. Everything in the world is bought, but the greatest gift is free, which is the gift of salvation. Oh, what an awesome father. I never knew what love was until the day I surrendered my life to Jesus, and I have inner joy and peace. I also feel transformed, renewed, and have a sense of belonging to the kingdom of God. My daughter, your words are full of boldness, seasoned with wisdom, and deep revelation. It is the Lord's doing. I am now conscious of many things of which I was ignorant before. I now have a clear conscience, and I have lost the appetite for the things I indulged in before. You now have a living conscience, because you are now a believer. Now that you are born again, draw closer to the Lord daily by reading His Word and praying to Him. You won't regret this drastic decision you have taken to follow Christ. My daughter, never base your salvation on feelings, but on faith. And no matter what comes your way, never give up on Jesus. Nobody has ever advised me like this because I grew up without a father. I am grateful to know you. Jesus is the father to the fatherless. Lean on him, and he will never let you down. 
He will fill the void in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Malin, compassion is an intelligent girl. Her wisdom is far beyond what words can express. I support the relationship. She will be a good wife and daughter-in-law. Compassion, will you marry me? Sir, why are you asking for my hand in marriage? We are both in Christ, and together, we will build a Christian home. Also, your character is what truly matters. In the book of Proverbs 31 verse 30, the Bible says, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Character is vital for a successful marriage, and I believe your character is good, and you can easily submit to me as your husband, when we get married. Many people may focus on superficial qualities like physical attractiveness or charm when evaluating a potential partner, but those things hold no significance in the context of marriage. What truly matters is a person's character. The Bible reminds us that beauty is temporary, but a woman who fears the Lord deserves great praise. Your character, along with other factors, has ignited a deep desire within me to take this bold step and ask for your hand in marriage. Yes I will. Officer, I would like to see Hala Woom. Are you here to make an accusation or file a claim against him? Because an investigation has been opened into all those whom he has defrauded or scammed? No, officer. I came to pray for him. Are you here to pray for his freedom so that he can continue his scamming schemes? Officer, absolutely not. No matter the gravity of his crime, God is a merciful father. If he confesses his sins, God will forgive him. Marcel, I am surprised to see you here despite what I intended to do to you. My poor choices and decisions in life landed me into this. It's not too late to make a drastic decision that will shape, structure, and transform your life. Surrender your life to the Savior and he will forgive you just as he forgave the thief on the cross. And the case, the tax collector who defrauded many. He also forgave my sins. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. No matter how messy your life has been God can give you a new beginning of salvation. Please make this decision and I assure you, you won't regret it in the name of Jesus, Amen. Come to Jesus and he will give you rest. In the book of Romans 10, verse 11, the Bible says, Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Accept him and your life will be put to order and he will wash your sins as white as snow in the name of Jesus, Amen. Are you willing to forsake your ways for Jesus to have his way into your life? Yes I am willing. I have been restless and guilty because of my sinful habits. I am willing to surrender my messy, battered, shattered and meaningless life to Jesus because I want to be made whole. Please repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins and blot out all my transgressions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. I renounce my ways today and I embrace yours in the name of Jesus. Lord grace me to follow you all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins and blot out all my transgressions in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior. I renounce my ways today and I embrace yours in the name of Jesus. Lord grace me to follow you all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am willing to pay back the money of all those I have scammed. Congratulations you have taken the best decision which will determine the next step for your destiny. Congratulations. Lord we thank you for our successful wedding. Lord take over our relationship in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this eventful, memorable, and remarkable day. Father, receive all the glory, honor, and adoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mommy, I want to get married. Does she have the fear of God? Mommy, it doesn't matter. I will change her to a believer when we get married. It means you are preparing to get married to a prayer point, not to a prayer partner. Killian, you don't have the ability or capability to change anyone. That's the responsibility of the Holy Spirit. Take a moment to reflect on this before attempting to make a foolish decision. Many have backslide because they got married thinking they could change the person, but instead, the person ended up changing them. They abandoned the word of God and its teachings in favor of worldly pleasures, all because of the choices they made. 
it has truly been a difficult and challenging time for me. Tragedy upon tragedy has become my portion. Others are counting their blessings, but I am expressing my agony and pain because of the death of my husband, the love of my youth. He died in his sleep. Even before I could recover, Malin died after a brief illness, and now Killian is dead. Oh God, I need your grace and help. I learned that the famine in our country is over, but how will I go back empty-handed? I left with my family, but tomorrow I will be going back alone, without my family. Oh, Lord, we need your grace. Lord Jesus, comfort us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our mother-in-law will be returning to her home country tomorrow. Wow, it's such a great opportunity for us to enjoy our freedom, as single people again. It's unnecessary for us to remain in a fruitless marriage since our husbands have traveled to the world beyond the ocean. Please do not speak on my behalf. You cannot make decisions for me. Please make your own decisions, and I will make mine. I have come too far to turn back now. I will continue to follow Jesus as long as I live. Forward ever with Jesus and never backward towards anything else. I will follow my mother-in-law to Bethlehem. Following Mama will make me deeply rooted in the things of God. Besides, I am willing to serve my mother-in-law. Make up your mind today to follow Jesus and he will lead you through. I can't embark on a journey without knowing the end. Walk by faith, not by sight. Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Mommy I have decided to follow you. My mother-in-law goodbye. Mommy, I will hold on to you. Look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. Mommy, it is time for me to make a drastic decision that will change my life and this is my decision. I will follow you and save your God. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go I will go, and where you stay I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God my God. Where you die I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. Mommy this is my decision. Okay let's go. I have seen that you are determined to go with me. This drastic decision of mine to forego, all and follow the God of Israel opened, a marital door for me after the death of my first husband and I am richly blessed with a God-fearing husband, who treats me with the fear of God. God will never leave nor forsake those who truly love and serve Him. Those who put God first will never come last in life. The decisions we make in life matter a lot. Nothing has ever been heard about my sister-in-law again because of the decision she took. She went back to her people, but I followed the Lord, and today I am enjoying the benefits of serving Him. Those who follow and serve the Lord will never waste their life. One step out of a bad decision is a step towards a better and good decision. No matter the bad decisions you made in the past, you can make a U-turn from the bad decision to a good decision by doing the things that will give glory to God. Make up your mind to study the Word of God daily. Make up your mind today to treat your partner with love that will please God. Make up your mind today to respect and obey your parents. Make up your mind today to treat your children with love. Make up your mind today to always prayerfully seek God's counsel before you make any decision in life. Lord. We thank you for the gift of life. Father, grace and help us to make decisions this year that will be in alignment with the plans you have for our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, grace us not to make decisions that will cause us pain in the end in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, help us to seek you always before making drastic decisions in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Gracious Father, Help us to make decisions that will take us from strength to strength, from glory to glory, and from blessings to blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for listening. Please like, share, comment and subscribe for more.